Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. Today we're going to be looking at the projectile motion, section 2.3 from the Nelson textbook. So I've chosen to do question number five, but you could always see the other questions from my playlist. So make sure you subscribe and that way you can see the other questions. And for question number five, we have an archer shoots at a target 60 meters away. If she shoots at a velocity of 55 meters per second to the right from a height of 1.5 meters. Does the arrow reach the target before striking the ground? And what should the archer do to get her next shot on target? Based on the wording of the question, they're already telling you that it didn't reach the target. They should have wrote, if it does not, what should the archer do? But let's just confirm it anyways in this question here. So in projectile motion, the first step that you should always try to do is to visualize the problem. In other words, to draw a picture. So we have an archer and they're 60 meters away from a target. So let's try to draw that situation. So I was trying to get a bit creative there. So here we have the archer and we have the red arrow. So if you're a comics fan, you will recognize the red arrow. And the enemy here, we have Deathstroke. So Deathstroke's gonna be our target. Now, from our visualization now, let's try to draw in what we were given as well in the question. So we were given that the target is 60 meters away. And they also mention that the initial launching velocity of the arrow is 55 meters per second to the right. So let's draw our initial velocity vector. So I drew it directly to the right because that's the way that they were telling us. 55 meters per second to the right. And the other piece of information that they give us is that it was launched from a height of 1.5 meters. So let's indicate that 1.5 meters. So they're asking us by the time it goes to 60 meters, was it able to reach 60 meters? So wait, let me try to rephrase that. So we know that there's 1.5 meters before hitting the ground. So we want to see if it hits the ground before it reaches 60 meters. So the way that we're going to do this, we want to figure out how long it takes for it to hit the ground. And we're going to compare that time with how long it takes to travel 60 meters. So we're going to be comparing times along the X component and along the Y component. So back to the problem in this case, to setting it up, after you visualized it, you drew what you were given, uh, you should pick a coordinate system. That's just where you place your X and Y plane. The best choice for most questions is to set it right at the ground level. Once you've done that, you're gonna draw your displacement vector. So we have delta dx to the right. and delta dy will be pointing downwards, right? Because the object is falling down. So that displacement is downwards. After your displacement, you draw your velocity vector, but we did that already. It was 55 meters per second to the right. And in all projectile questions that we do, we always assume that the acceleration is due to gravity. So this means that it's pointing downwards and we approximate it to be negative 9.8 meters per second square. Now, the main part to this question, as I was mentioning before, we want to compare time intervals. So we want to compare the time interval that it takes to fall 1.5 meters, and we're going to compare that to the time interval to travel 60 meters. So we're doing a time comparison. So let's call this delta T2 which is our unknown, and delta T1, 
is are unknown as well. So for the y component and the x component. All right, so once you do this, the next one is you always want to use the main equation of projecta, which is the star equation, delta d equals to b initial delta t plus a half a delta t squared. So I'm going to write it out, and I'm going to break it down along the x and along the y component. Along the x component, I was able to simplify it because I know that the acceleration due to gravity only points down. So horizontally, there is no acceleration. So we simplify that equation. And we can simplify further by considering directions because right now it's a vector quantity and we want to now indicate the directions by assuming to the right is positive and up is positive. So using this convention, our horizontal displacement, which is to the right, is going to be positive 60. Our initial velocity is 55 meters per second pointing to the right, so we take it to be positive as well. And we call delta t2 the horizontal time that it took to travel 60 meters. So that's what we're trying to find. So divide both sides by 55. So let's put this into our calculator. You get about 1.1 second. So it takes about 1.1 second for it to travel 60 meters. So from that time, we want to compare to the time that it takes to fall 1.5 meters. So for that, we're going to consider the y component. And we're going to simplify the main equation along the y component, given that the acceleration is due to gravity. So we replace a by g. Now, I haven't considered directions yet, so that's going to be my next step. Keep in mind that if it points up is positive, if it points down is negative. So my displacement vertically was going down, so I'm going to put a negative 1.5. Oh, but we could simplify this further because our initial velocity was only to the right, so there was no component downwards, so that's actually zero so that takes care of that part of the equation and g the vector points down so we're going to replace this by negative 9.8 and the time interval is delta t1 that's what we called it before so the only thing that we have to do now is just isolate for delta t1 and we do so by dividing both sides by the coefficient of the unknown, which is delta, delta T1 is our unknown. So delta T1 squared will be equal to 1.5 divided by 1 over 2 times 9.8. To isolate for delta t1, we're going to take the square root on both sides. So this simplifies to the square root of 1.5 divided by 1 over 2 times 9.8. So now we can put this into our calculator. Uh, I got approximately 0 0.55. So what does this mean? The time interval that it takes to travel 60 meters is 1.1 second. The time interval to fall 1.5 meters is 0 0.55. So this means that the target never... This means the target was not hit. In other words, the arrow falls before it hits the target. So 
if we go back to the question, the question was already hinting that, right? But then they wanted us to verify it. But there's a second part. What should the archer do to get her next shot on the target? Well, what she can do, she can increase the angle to not be horizontal. She can increase the angle. Ideally, the best angle, if you want to go the furthest away, would be 45 degrees. Or she can try to make it have a larger launching velocity. So faster than 55 meters per second. Or a combination of both. So you could launch it faster than 55 meters per second at an angle. And again, the best angle to go as far away as possible is the 45 degree angle. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the projectile motion, but keep in mind I have other videos, so make sure you subscribe and go look at the playlist where you can learn more about projectile motion. I'll see you in the other videos. Bye-bye.